right, boss ladies in the making, we are going to go over one of my favorite topics, and that is styling. For those who have not met me in person yet, I am Miss K. Um, I am a licensed esthetician. I do specialize in lash extensions and waxing, and lash extensions are kind of like my baby. Well, they are my baby, and I'm so excited to go over this um, theory with you guys. We also have our Boss Lady Beauty online, where you can find your new lash mapping book. Um, you can actually find that too through your link tree. Go ahead and get onto your student link tree, pull up the beauty book lash mapping style. It will have a picture and it will say new on there if you want to follow along or if you want extra references. Let us begin. Welcome to Styling. After watching this video, you should be able to identify everything you need to properly create different lash styles. Remember, this still takes time to master, and the best way to master it is to be flexible and have fun. I'm going to show you at least two techniques and ways to perform the different steps of styling lash application. Start with one and then the other. Once you find what works best for you, then you'll feel confident and get faster. Please don't rush it and don't stress it. Take it step by step. Now, let's learn. References. So on your link tree, like I told you guys in the beginning of this slide, open up your Lash Beauty book or your Lash Extension textbook. For your Lash Beauty book, your page is 29. On the Lash Extension actual textbook, it's from 56 to 59. When we get into the styling portion of this, you can open up your styling, um, your new styling book for references as well. So let's get into the why. Why do this service? As the artist, it is a low cost, high return service, builds long lasting returning clients. And that's what we are all shooting for, right? As a client, it is a definite confident booster, low maintenance beauty, that extra wow factor and enhances your client's facial features. With styling, you also can customize, and we will make sure to add this in here, we can customize your client's experiences, um, customize their lash extensions. So for example, if they tell you they want a wispy cat eye. Well, with styling, we'll be able to teach you guys how to provide that for your client. Benefits of these um, of this service, sorry, to get long, full, dark, thicker, and more enhanced lashes. That extra pop, you can add embellishments to these as well for lashes pretty lashes. You can customize those lash sets to match your client's likes and diversify those lash sets. Also, a big benefit that I feel like nowadays with social media being such a huge thing, especially for us in the beauty industry, is to have creative content and it'll aid your work um, and really make it stand out. Contraindications of this service. Contagious diseases, or disorders such as pink eye, ocular herpes, impetigo, tinea, warts, eyelash mites. Other contraindications or concerns would include allergic reactions, pregnancy, medications that result in loss of health in eyelashes. Um, just a quick run through to go through this. Make sure that with any lash service, you are doing your consultations. We at Boss Lady Beauty Academy really enforce and want you guys to make sure that you're going over that consultation because any of these listed should be made known to you before the service. For allergic reactions, you guys sh should be aware and we will teach you as well to perform a removal followed by a lash bath, and you can refer to those videos or those chapters in the book on how to do those. If you have a client that has an allergic reaction, you do want to be sure to remove those immediately, perform a lash bath, and refer them to a physician. If it gets any worse, they can take allergy medicine. If you're using a black adhesive, you can wait about a week or so, have them come back, do a patch test with a clear adhesive. 
if they do not react to that, that means that they are allergic to the black carbon and they can use adhesives, but they will have to use clear adhesives. If they do react to the clear adhesive, they are not great candidates for lash extensions. Pregnancy is also a big one. Yes, your clients can get lash extensions if they're pregnant, but keep in mind that those clients are going to need extra measures of comfort to be sure that they aren't experiencing discomfort during their lash extension service. You can provide a leg bolster. You can make sure that you allow your client and remind your client to use the restroom before as pregnant women tend to use the restroom more frequently because of the baby um, and the placenta kind of pushing down on their bladder. So just make sure that you ask them that. We have leg bolsters here in the academy. And if you are at home, I would say and advise to uh, go ahead and grab you a leg bolster or a pillow that lifts your client's legs, which in turn releases pressure off of their lower back. The last one that I want to touch up on is medications that result in loss of health in eyelashes. So thyroid medications, hormonal medications, if your client has thyroid issues or hormonal imbalances that may cause their lash extensions to fall off quicker because of those disorders messing with the natural lash shedding cycle. So just be sure to go over this during consultation to avoid any mishaps. When to do the service. So you, most clients want their services provided um, for things like special event, their daily beauty, sparse lashes, because they do tend to want lashes that are visible for them. Um, also, lash extensions when placed correctly and done in a healthy manner. And when I say that, I mean, considering the client's natural lashes, it can and will give them lashes that they can see that they feel better about and it prevents them from using lash strips that can further damage those already sparse lashes just be sure that when you have clients like this you are and whether it's clients like this healthy lashes no matter who your client is make sure that isolating is always 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 a top priority along with safety sanitation um, sterilization and infection control. When to do the service is also to create the illusion of different face and eye shapes. Tools and supplies that you will need. Two lash tweezer, tweezers, three lash trays, one table cover, two micro applicators, and we are actually going to change that to four because you would use two micro applicators for your priming and two micro applicators for your bonding at the end. Your lint-free applicators, your under eye gel pad pack, your flower rings, your mascara wand, double-sided tape and glue ring, which is actually the flowering ring cup. So we would use about two to three of those. Your lash bath and brush, or you can use two of those lint-free applicators to do your lash bath a jade stone if you are using a glue dot and lashing off of your hand or you don't need a jade stone if you're using the lash tile and your flower ring cups a lash mirror to make sure that you're seeing the bottom angle of your lashes and checking for stickies your sd wipes paper tape lash adhesive primer adhesive remover your rolling cart your ring light squeeze water bottle lash fan hand sanitizer and a bed with sheet leg bolster for this paper tape we're actually going to change this to um and i will go in and re and fix this for you guys we will change this to sensitive tape which is the pink tape that you guys get in your kits it is ideal for clients as it is made and designed for adhering to the skin but not ripping at the hairs how to actual demo so after we go through this theory, we are going to do a hands-on. I am going to have 
On a mannequin lashes mapped out for you, we are going to demo a hybrid cat eye and a hybrid open eye. Client reference photos is a really big one because when, and we'll, I'll show you guys this um, during your visual demo. Um, clients tend to, if they wear lash strips or if they like their mascara a certain way, you can always ask them to bring in pictures to show you what they like, whether it's a picture that they got from your Instagram or any portfolio that you may have. You can tell them that if they're unsure of what they want, tell them to go ahead and open up that Instagram. It's going to get you more viewers. It's going to get likes on your page and more people to visit. So basically more social media traffic and they can show you what they like because a lot of times clients aren't really educated and know what the different, what we mean from different curls, different styles, different, they are not really sure. So a picture is always a really plus for them because they can show you what they like and a plus for you because you can see what they like and you can map according to that. Obviously, as long as the set that they're looking at is healthy and okay to do on their natural eyelashes. So again, on this demo, on the demo portion where I'm showing you guys how to do these styles, I'll do the hybrid cat eye, I'll do the hybrid open eye. I will even show you guys client reference photos and I will map those out for you. So you guys can always screenshot and check that out um, so you can use it in the future. Variations of the service, styles, glue, curl types, color, length, material of lashes and embellishment. So you can do a hybrid set and add some color to that, add some glitter and it will make that lash set super fun. It can cater to your client's needs if they like those pops of color and the extra bling, if they like that, you can always customize those lashes for them. When we talk about curl types, you can mix curls. So if you're doing a lash set and you see their eyes and you're like, mm, I feel like they can use a flatter curl in the beginning and use maybe more of a curl at the end. You can mix CC lashes and D curl lashes. You can mix C and CC curl. You can mix C and D. It's all about that placement. It's all about the styling, the mapping, and what fits and complements your client's natural eye shape as well as their face. A tip of the service is the tape back method. So this is a great way to help isolate and figure out how many natural lashes you have left to lash and where. This method will pull back the extensions that you have already placed and leave the natural lashes exposed so that they will be easier to isolate and lash. Appropriate aftercare, client dismissal, rebooking and retail options goes as follows, avoid getting your lashes wet for 48 hours after the application. If you use a bonder, they can get your, their lashes wet as soon as the very next day. Don't rubber touch your eyes. No picking, no pulling, rubbing, all of that can lead to poor retention. Not only that, it can also damage the natural lashes. Brush your lashes every morning or every time that they seem out of place. Brush those lashes after washing them as well. Don't use oil-based product around the eyes. Tell your clients to try not to sleep on their face. If they have trouble with that, a, an extra tip for you guys is that you can advise them to switch over to a silk pillow. Silk, unlike cotton, does not snag at the lashes. It's actually recommended by estheticians as well as dermatologists um, for better hair less frizz, breakage, and skin. So it's kind of a three in one if they switch over to a silk pillow case. It's great for their lashes, especially for people that sleep on their faces and sleep roughly. It's good for their hair, good for their skin. Three in one. Wash those lashes every morning and evening. Um, another tip that I like to tell clients in the morning when you do your skincare routine, incorporate washing your lashes. Same thing with the night. You also want to advise them to wash their lashes after swimming and sweating. So swimming in pools, any open body of water, go ahead and tell them to wash their lashes so that the salt isn't laying on those lash extensions. Same thing with sweating. If you have gym goers or people that like to go on walks or anytime that they're sweating, 
or even crying, which is something that I should add on there too. If they're watching a good movie and they're crying or having a rough day, wash their lashes after that because salt and oil tends to be what our endocrine. So when we cry, when we sweat, our endocrine system is its job and its function in our body is to release any toxins. So for example, any oils, anything that has to go, that's how it goes and it gets out of our body. It goes out through our pores. So sweating and crying are really, really big ones. And your client should know to wash their lashes after that. And super important if they want to retain the lashes that they are paying for. And it's really good for you to let them know because when they come back, they should have, if as long as they're following all of these aftercare steps, they should have great retention. And it makes your job a lot easier because you won't have so much to fill and it'll keep them happy because their lashes will look a lot fuller for a lot longer. Stay on top of those fills every two to three weeks. Pre-booking is a really big one. Once you have, and it says right there to rebooking at the end of your service, ask your clients, let them know, hey, so what date did you want to come back? And that leads them to thinking, okay, let me book it now so that I already have my spot secure to keep up with my lashes. Retail options include lash wands, bath supplies, lash serums. You guys can make your own lash kits. I do. I know a lot of people that do. Your clients will be purchasing those lash kits from you, which should have their lash shampoo, how to dry, aftercare cards, lash wands, and um, lash brushes so that it they buy it from you. They have everything that they need to make sure that they're washing their lashes thoroughly. If you do not have or want to make your own kits, they can get those from lash supply stores or Amazon. Just make sure that what they're washing with is a lash shampoo, not baby shampoo, not micellar water. That is okay to remove makeup, but to actually wash their lashes, they need to be using a lash shampoo with a clean lash shampoo brush. Cleaning up after your service, be sure to throw away all of your single-use items. Wash multi-use implements with soap and water. EPA them, then sterilize them. You should be EPA for 10 minutes and sterilizing for 10 minutes as well. Take off your bed sheets, soap and water, clean it. EPA for 10 minutes on the bed before placing new sheets on the bed. Go ahead and restock your supplies and set up for your next client. Thank you guys so much. In the next portion of this video, you guys will see a demo for a hybrid set as well as a, sorry, a hybrid set cat eye style and a hybrid set for an open eye style. And I will show you guys that here in just a moment. All right, future boss babes. This is Miss K. And as promised, this is our styling um, demo video. As you can see, I have started to apply some lashes. Um, <clears throat> just to kind of make this video a little quicker and also for visuals. So on this client, we are going to name her Suzanne. So Suzanne, um, we're doing some practice lashes on her. As you can see, I'm using, I don't know if you guys can read that, but I'm using sizes 10 through 13. So on this eye, I have 10, 11, 12, and 13. This is going to be a cat eye. That doesn't look pretty. This one, oh, I'm so sorry. On this side, we have an open eye. And I want you guys to really notice <clears throat> the difference. Because on this eye, on the cat eye side, we are using sizes 10 through 13, right? Um, we're starting at the shortest length and gradually getting to our longest length that'll be on the outer corner. So we have 10, 11, 12, and 13. On the open eye side, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 12, 11. This is gonna create the open eye effect as the longest sizes will be in the center, 
we will taper back down to 11, just not as quite short as the beginning of the eye. Never drop down to the same size as the beginning of the eye. Always about a size or two longer. So even though we're using the same sizes and these will each be a hybrid set, they will give different results. I have this sponge too, just for visuals. So as you guys can see, we did some fan practice and this is the differences between sets. So I used almost all the same lengths, but they are all different styles. So I have a volume. If you come right here, I have a classic or a wet set. So this one's actually a wet set because I'm using closed fans as well as um, classic lashes. Let me see if this helps you guys see better. So this is what a wet set is. You guys will learn this with me in styling. I have a hybrid set. And as you can see, this is the set, um, this is a set that we will be doing on our Suzanne today. It is a combination of classic lashes as well as fans. Lastly, right here, I even did a demo on wispy lashes. I have fans and I have spikes or closed fans. On these particular ones, I went a size 13 for the spikes. Let's see if you guys can see that better. There you go and a size 11 on the fans, because when creating wispy sets, they have to be two to three sizes difference between your base or your fans or your classic lashes, whatever your base layer is for an order. In order for your spikes to show, they must be two to three sizes bigger. And we will get into that um, later on. I just wanted to show you guys the difference between these and the crazy part is, is that there is literal hundreds of different styles that you can do and that's just four. So we are gonna get into it. I'm gonna be using my CEO adhesive. I'm gonna begin to shape that. I have my glue ring right here. I have classic lashes 10 through 13. On this side, I have the volume lashes 10 through 13, and we will be combining those to finish off this set. So I'm gonna to continue to shake this. I'm gonna do it over here. Should use my glue ring. So yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and I am gonna talk with you guys while I'm finishing this set up. I may not fill it all the way, um, I could, but I want to really just show you guys the different styling. If you could see, I already have some on here, here as well, but I didn't finish adding fans to this side. And for this video, I will, I don't have any pre-made, so I will be making my hands, um, or I'm so sorry, I will be making my fans handmade so that you guys can see that as well. I like using pre-mades, I just don't have them with me and in facilities. So at the academy, we kind of like to use the fans more on clients. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way. I'm gonna dispense my adhesive. One moment. And I wanna show you guys, cause now, in our San Antonio facility, we have adhesive wipes. And when you guys are done with your bottles, let me show you, so I already dispensed it. Every time that we get adhesive around the nozzle like this, it tends to get the lid stuck. So make sure every time after you dispense, you burp your bottle, use your lint-free adhesive wipe, to wipe it down. This will prevent from the prevent the lid from sticky. It's a really good practice for you guys to use with the supplies that we have in school and with your very own. Always, always, always. I like to tell myself and my students, your adhesive is your baby. So make sure that you burp it after you use it, wipe it down, close it up, and sit it upright. We can sit it over here. I'm so sorry, Suzanne. Never reach over your client with that because that can happen. And that's scary. 
All right, so the thing with styling is that you can even create your own sets, which I think is really cool. But one big difference about it is that if you create your own set, just make sure that you always take into account your client's natural lashes or natural lash health. Sorry, guys. Just take it into consideration. Yes, you can always play around and do new things with your, um, with, you know, with your sets, but I always encourage everybody to just make sure that what you are applying is healthy for the natural client. And you can always even do sets. If, so let's say a client shows you a picture, right? And she shows you a picture of her lashes with, let's say, strip lashes, right? So she has her favorite strip lashes, her go-to lash. You can mimic that style once you become more advanced into lash extensions. However, clients will tell you that they get these in their size 25 millimeters. That is unrealistic for lash extensions. You can mimic that same style with shorter lengths or lengths that are healthy for their lashes. I personally do not offer or advise for anybody to use over an 18 because, and you will have clients that naturally have good lashes that look like, I mean, I've had clients that have beautiful, dark, full, healthy lashes that look like they're about size 13 on their own. You can go longer on those as long as they can handle it, but I still think that even an 18 is pretty long. So you can always go based on what your client likes. Just make sure that you're adjusting that and educate your clients. Tell them um, that it's just not ideal. You can even, I have a, well, I developed a good habit of trying to educate my clients. And what I do now when they're kind of like stubborn, I'll take a picture of their lashes. I will show them the picture of their lashes. So let's say I have a client and they have, relatively sparse or frail lashes I will show them a picture of their lashes and educate them on why a size 18 is not healthy why it can damage the actual lashes and in the long run your clients are going to thank you because you are not telling them not to get that size because you don't want to get that size. You're telling them because you care about their natural lash health. And as lash artists and specialists, we should always, always, always make that abundantly clear for them because they will come back or they will go somewhere else and they will blame you for the mishap. So always do that um, as far as You'll have, okay, so you'll have clients as well that may tell you, I want my lashes done. I've never had them done. I don't know what to get. So I believe that the first step to this would be to go through the consultation, check and see what their lashes look like, their natural state. Have your clients sit up towards you so that you can see their eyes, right? So you want to find the center of their eyes and determine what type of eye shape do they have? Do they have small eyes, big eyes? Are they upturned, downturned? Are they almond eyes? Are they wide set? There's so many different factors that you must consider when selecting your set or style that you want to use on said client. Once you have done that, determine what 
sizes their lashes can handle and you can do that by holding up a lash extension to your client's natural lash. So this is a 12 and I don't know if you guys can see from there but this is just a tad bit longer. So this client, Suzanne, can handle 12, 13s up to maybe a 14 I would say because that would be twice the length of her lashes. When you're doing that, you can ask them too. Okay, you've never gotten lash extensions. You can have them either check your page, your work, and show you something they like. Or if they have a picture of a set that they've seen anywhere and something that they want to try, encourage them. Encourage them to show you pictures because it's a win-win for everybody. You get to see what well, they get to see the style that they want. You get to kind of already have a gist of what set you will be performing. Makes your job a tad bit easier and it makes them happy because that's something that they chose. To piggyback off this, the only thing that I can say is that sometimes clients will show you a set that will not look good on their face shape or because of their eye shape. So if you have a client that has downturned eyes and they show you a, let's say a wispy cat eye, you would not perform that on them. And this goes hand in hand with educating your clients because that client with downturned eyes, a cat eye will not be suitable for their eye shape. And the reason why I say this is because a cat eye style has the longest length on the outer corner. When you put longer lengths on the end of your client's eyes, downturned eyes, it will further make that eye look even more downturned because the heaviest or longest lashes are gonna be at the end, further pushing that eye down. At this point, you can tell your client, and again, this really goes hand in hand with educating. When I tell you guys, your clients will not be upset. They will understand and they need to understand that you are the professional. Explain it to them just like that. So Suzanne, you have downturned eyes. And with the set that you're looking at, that set is more for upturned or almond eyes because with your specific eye type, it can cause the, what we call a drooping effect, which just means that exactly how it sounds, your eye will look even droopier. What we can do is do a wispy set, but with this wispy set, we will do an open eye. It will give the center of your eye a lift, which will make you look more youthful. It'll make you look more awake. When we do this set on you, We'll do, so an open eye wispy, you still get the wisp. You will get a lift to your eye. And overall, it will look so much better. It'll be customized and tailored to your client's natural eyes. And they will just thank you for it. It's going to look so much better. It's going to look so much better for content for you. And everything in between. So this is what I mean by educating your clients. And you can even tell them and show them the difference. So look at this picture that you showed me. This client has, let's say, almond eyes. Do you see how their eye shape differs from yours? Nine out of 10, they're going to see what you are talking about. And they will tell you, okay, I'm going to trust you. You're the professional. And that should make you feel really good because you can't just give clients what they want because sometimes when you do that, when they see the final result, they will not be happy. 
or they will be, but you know that it doesn't look good. So always, always, always check out those natural lashes. Do your consultation. Figure out what is best for your client according to what they're looking for. And there's always room for compromise. Um, and again, they will thank you. Right now, I am finishing off. I have several classics on here, so I'm still applying some classics. I'm just going in with a few more fans to make this hybrid a fuller set. <clears throat> when performing lash extensions on your client, especially when styling, please make sure you're mapping. There are different ways to map, especially when you're a beginner. Make sure that you're mapping because right now I'm doing two different styles. So of course, these are not going to be symmetrical, although I'm using the same sizes. We're doing two different styles on Suzanne's eyes. However, on real clients, when we're not doing things like this, you want to ensure that you are mapping. That way you are achieving perfect symmetry. One eye doesn't look bigger than the other or lazier than the other, et cetera, et cetera. I find that it really helps get or look into getting a, what's that called? A client styling book. They have them. You can buy them on Amazon. You can jot it to your notes, but that way you can write your client's name down as well as the set and style that they took. So that way, when that client comes back, you can always have that handy so that you, when you go to do a fill, you already know what sizes you guys used last time. It's a really good practice. I use my booking, the booking app that I use allows me to add client notes. So let's say Suzanne leaves today and she chooses to open eyes. So I would write her notes in. I will say, Suzanne did a hybrid open eye. These are the sizes that I used. If you're using it in a book, just write it down. So that way, when they come back for their fill, you can always refer to that and not have to guess what sizes they use. Because if you get them wrong, that symmetry will not be there any longer. So just make sure you take that into consideration. I got a sticky on my lash pad, as you can see. Okay, cool. I always check for those during my services because they are not fun. I'm going to add some 12s over here. I know you guys can barely see me fanning, and I feel like the video quality isn't too great. But I will show you some of this in class. I'm also fanning a little closer to me because the phone is kind of in the way of me being able to see the fan that I'm creating. So another thing that I wanted to discuss with you all is the steps before I started this. Make sure no matter if you're doing a fill or a full set that you are taking the proper steps to ensure that you are doing the best you can, that everything is clean, that your client is comfortable. Always ask for your client's comfortability level. Ask them if they're okay, if they got a stretch, if the tape is itching them. Always perform a lash bath. You guys can refer to those videos for a how-to. So before I started on Miss Suze, um, Miss Suzanne, I began with cleaning out her lashes or lash bathing her. Actually, I'm so sorry. I began with my consultation. I went over any contraindications she may have. Luckily, she did not have any, but I made sure to go over those. Then I proceeded to doing um, before, prior to lash mapping and lash bath, I had my clients sit up, look directly at me or the center of my eyebrows so that I can pinpoint where her, the center of her eyes were. 
After I laid that out, I marked the center of her eyes so that when I create a map, I would get the center of the eye where I want the longest length and where I want to peek up on my cat eye. Always take that into consideration. Once she laid down, I performed a lash bath on her. I then applied her, her eye patches and tape, followed by priming her lashes. Then I began to map the styles that I was gonna do. I asked her again if she was comfortable. I sanitized my hands again. And when I was done with that, I got to work. And here we are now creating these beautiful sets on beautiful Suzanne. You should always ask your clients prior to starting if they need to use the restroom because failure to do so can result in them having to use a restroom in the middle of your set. Sometimes it will happen, that's perfectly okay. Just keep in mind that when lashing, every second counts. So just make sure that you are checking that out with your clients. I always, always, always tell my clients <clears throat> in the beginning of the service to go ahead and set their stuff down, use the restroom for me, and come get comfortable. I also have a leg pillow. Uh, in the academy, we have leg bolsters. The purpose of those are to place them under your clients, near their butt, um, under their knees, in order to release some pressure off of their lower spine when laying on your bed for so long. Your clients will thank you because it's the little things that count. Even after the service, I have a snack bar and ask my clients if, you know, they've been laying here for hour, two, two and a half, whatever, if you're beginning, maybe three to four hours. So offer them snacks after, offer them a water, make sure that they like their lashes, make sure that you're checking for stickies, make sure you're, that you're asking them if they like the service if they liked the results. And if there's anything you can do, you can also advise them that if they wanna go fuller the next time or less full, that they can always do that on when fill time comes around. You also wanna make sure that you are rebooking them for their follow-up appointment, or I'm so sorry, for their fill appointment. I always, as soon as I'm done with the service, I have my clients cash out and I say, okay, do you want to go ahead and book for the next one? That way your spot is secured and everybody, all my other clients and potential clients can work around the schedule that I already have with you. That will make them feel appreciated. That will make them feel like they got that first come first serve and that will secure you your income and your appointment for the next visit. It also, I feel as though it makes it easier for me to kind of plan my month out. If I'm rebooking my appointments, I can see what days I'm going to take off. I can see what days I have who. I feel like I've gotten so familiar with my clientele that in the beginning of the week, when I have one client, what whatever that client is or whoever it is, I know who I'm going to see for the rest of the week depending on if they're on two or three week appointments. So pre-booking is always everything. It makes your life so much easier. And there's two, you know, cause people have kids and jobs and if you pre-book them two to three weeks and they get to pick their date and time that they come, they can schedule the rest of their life around that because they already know that they have this appointment with you. I am applying a few more fans so that you guys can see the end result. She is wanting a lighter hybrid set. So I am going, I'm not going to fill up every single lash. When you are lashing your clients, make sure that you are lashing the healthy lashes only. 
if you see baby lashes or lashes that are kind of grown and already turning, you don't want to lash those. And the reason why is because when your lash, your client's lashes are still in the baby phase, they will not retain, well, they can retain lashes, but I feel as though it will be unhealthy for their natural lashes because that natural lash is still um, so small. So I always skip these smaller lashes. And if I see that a lash is turned or looking a little crazy, I will leave that alone because I do not want to, if you apply a lash there, it's probably gonna fall out anyway. Now, if it's healthy and it's not turning or it looks okay, oh no, this one fell off. Um, then it is okay to apply to that lash. I also, when I am lashing my clients, try not to fight with a natural lash. If you see that your client's lashes are difficult to isolate, it's okay to skip that lash and come back to it. Because nine out of 10, when extensions are applied to the lashes surrounding it, it will be a lot easier to move those lashes out of the way. I always lash my easiest lashes first. If I'm lashing somebody that has many layers, I will lash in layers. I will use the tape back method, pull some of those lashes up so that I can get to the bottom layer lashes a lot easier. I, and everybody knows that I am the tape queen. I love me some tape, Lord. It makes my job so much easier. It makes lashing isolation a lot more comfortable. And I think that it makes my services go by a lot faster because I really try to use all of the tools that I have available to me to make the process of lash extension services smooth and go as swiftly as possible. And people appreciate it, you know, because you're taking those steps, you're getting them out there a bit quicker. One thing that I will say when you are a beginning lash artist, try not to focus on your time as much. Begin by perfecting your craft. Begin by, you know, you, your clients, let's say you are practicing on your family or parents, uh, sisters, whoever, friends, let them know, you know, they should know that you're just starting, that it may take a little bit. So to clear those schedules and practice quality goes a long way. Time comes with it nobody's ever going to be super fast and get an actual full set in in the very beginning so just practice what you are working on because i promise you that time will come the quickness the efficiency of it will come the beginning is more for you to get in tune and get familiar with what you're doing and the more that you practice lash extensions, whether you're practicing on a mannequin or a person or whoever, the more that you do that, the more that, or the better that you're gonna get. So I always tell everybody, try not to focus on that time. I mean, obviously if we have clients at school or if somebody has somewhere to go, you know, skip a couple lashes, but make sure that you're working off both eyes so that those lash, so your client's set comes out symmetrical and one eye doesn't look forward than the other. With time, again, you will get faster and faster and faster. So on Suzanne, we are looking pretty full and actually almost time. I had somebody ask me the other day what they can do to make isolating easier. Use both your tweezers. If you can see when I'm picking through these, I'm really using both my tweezers to help me get a lash, a single natural lash by itself. If I'm sitting here going like this, I will be here all day trying to get one specific lash. But if I use my tweezer, 
I usually have it turned this way. I push some of the extensions to the side. Boom, I found one. I can insert my tweezer that way. Grab an extension, dip it in the center of my adhesive, pull it out slowly, and apply my extension. If it'll let me apply, there we go. Apply my extension to my client's natural lash. It really helps to use both tweezers. When I say use all the tools that are available to you, that is exactly what I mean. Because the purpose of me telling you this is to remind you to work smarter, not harder. And you will see that performing lash extensions becomes more efficient when you use the tools that you have to make it more efficient. I am gonna apply a, just a couple more right here on the outer corners to ensure that this hybrid set is fluffy and beautiful. I also feel as though I don't want to get them too full because she didn't want them that full. Another good tip to tell you guys while I wrap this up is when you have your clients, <clears throat> you do not have to lash because a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with not just isolation, but also struggle with the inner and outer corners, skip the first two to three lashes and the last four to maybe even five lashes on your client's eyes. And let me tell you why. You can avoid overcrowding the ends of the eyes and the beginning of the eye. These lashes tend to go fast anyway. They're so little and hard to get to. Another thing is when you lash the inner corner, it can tickle or cause uncomfortability to the eye bone, the crease right here. Always skip them. It is going to save you time. It's going to keep you from being frustrated. And it's going to be more comfortable for the client anyway. I skipped the last few lashes on my client's eyes because the ends are going to be covered anyway with the extensions that I've already applied. Also, it avoids overcrowding and that drooping effect at the end and really makes for a bomb set that looks neat and clean and they will, the ends of those eyes will definitely thank you. I even have my lash girl, she knows I always tell her, even though I get a cat eye set, my last three to four lashes, she knows to leave them alone. I don't like the itchiness at the end. I'm just um, trying to make sure none of this is stuck. After that, I get them to, or I get her to add one or two. So the last, even though she's skipping the last three to four lashes, I my last two lashes that she's actually lashing, I always go about a size or two shorter. They won't be noticeable at the end of a cat eye look but they will look a lot better. It'll look a lot better. It won't overcrowd the end of my eye. You won't even be able to see those shorter lengths, but it's more comfortable for me because in the beginning, in the front of your eye and the end of your eye, it comes to a close like this, right? So when you apply, especially when you apply heavy lash extensions to the beginning or the end, it is super, super, super uncomfortable. And they will be itching the ends of their eyes and ruining those lashes anyway. So it's just a really good tip and trip. You can, or tip and trick. Um, you can also use tape for those inner, those tr tricky inner corners. And I will actually show you guys what I mean visually. I'm just applying right here because that one lash, I know you guys saw it, came off. I did not like that. I feel like that needed a lash.
and probably apply a few more tens right here in the beginning of the cat eye side because it's a little empty right here in this one. Also, actually, one last thing I wanted to tell you guys as well. When you're doing a hybrid set, there is not really a formula or an exact way to do a hybrid set. A hybrid set is described as a lash set that has both fans and classic lashes. By saying this, what I mean is that it doesn't have to be one classic, one fan, one classic, one fan. If your client wants, you can do that. So let me say, start off by that. You can do one classic, one lash, or one fan, one classic, one fan. That's fine. Now, if you have a client that wants a hybrid set and you notice that they have lashes that are a bit more on the sparse side, you can totally have them add, or I'm so sorry, you can totally have them do a hybrid set that has more fans than it does classics. If you have somebody like Suzanne that has a lot of lashes and she wants a lighter hybrid set, you can use more classics than fans. So you can go classic, classic fan or whatever you feel more comfortable with. There is not really an exact way to do it. Just go based off your client's natural lashes. Let's add a, no, a 12 goes there. Let's add a 12 fan. All right. And I'm going to add it about here. Just because it's going between the 12 and the 13. But there's a lot of 13, so I'm going to put a 12 right here to make sure I'm giving emphasis on the center of the eye where the longest lengths are. I think that we are just about done. Let's make sure I have a lash right here, so I'm just going to add this one now. And I will show you guys the end result and the difference so that you guys can actually visit physically and visually see it. All right, I believe I am semi-done. I keep saying that guys, I'm a perfectionist. Please don't judge me. I actually add one more here and I'm going to try to lift this so that you guys can see the difference in the sets. Let me see. If not, I can put it on my hand or something so that because I want you guys to visually see the difference between a cat eye hybrid and an open eye hybrid, especially because we use the same sizes. Just use them in different parts of the eye in order to create a specific set. All right. Place this. And as you guys can see, I'm literally using either my nail or my tweezer to isolate, to help me isolate. Always go for top attachment. You guys can also attach to the bottom or the sides, just depending on what works for you. I usually, most of my clients have curlier lashes, so I prefer a side attachment, especially when I'm lash wrapping. It's a lot more difficult to lash wrap on a mannequin. Maybe we can make a class on that so you guys can see what that means. It's just really getting the lash fan, especially, well, it only works when you're hand making your fans. But when you do that, you get maximum retention because you are wrapping the lash extension around the natural lash. And maybe the lash is not going anywhere, anywhere at all. All right. I promise you guys, after this one, I'm really done. 
Well, if it wants to get on there. Let's try this one. There we go. All right. I'm going to put these down because if not, I am going to give her a full, full, full set. Sorry, right, this looks a little crazy. I am going to come in, double check. And begin to brush these out. Do the same on this side. All right. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can tell. You see how if Suzanne could open her eyes, we started shorter, went all the way longer on this eye. This is what a cat eye hybrid looks like. On this eye, we have a open eye. The longest lengths are in the center. It's a little hard to tell. Let me try to lift it like this. See how the longest lengths are in the center? If she was to open her eye, this would give it a very nice lift to her eye. This would give her eye a long, sleeker, more sexy look. Um, they're so pretty. You can see from this angle, same thing. So this one starts short and long. This one is longer in the center. And there you guys have it, a demo for both. I'm gonna see if I can, I'm gonna peel this so you guys, oh no, a little lash stayed behind. Let me see if I can apply this to my hand, how it would look. There we go. Shortest to long. I could really use these as strips. Too bad I don't wear them. Ha ha ha. See that length at the end? That would create such a beautiful cat eye. Let's put this back on her. And then I'll show you guys the open eye. And again, you guys can even create your own set. We have our styling book. You guys can find it on Linktree. It is the new styling book. And it has so many different styles and how to map them. And you can, of course, just adjust the sizes. Okay, this isn't working. Um, you can adjust the sizes according to what you are doing. Guys, I didn't tape the bottom, so that's why I'm getting stickies like this. I usually never get them anymore. And on this one, you can see longest links are in the center. And that would give her a very lifted, beautiful open eye. But yeah, check out our styling book. You guys have this these references um, for a good reason and jot them down. Practice them on your friends or family, on each other here at the academy, just so that you guys can really get in the hang of doing different lash styles and sets for your clients. So pretty. All right, and again, I am Miss Kate. If you guys have any questions on styling, any questions at all on lashing, I am a licensed esthetician, but outside of the school, I perform mostly lash extensions and waxing. So I'm very familiar. I'm still doing a lot of hands-on because I work three days a week taking clients and I'm three days at the school. So you guys can always, always, always email me on class reach with any questions you may have. I hope to get some questions because I like to answer them and I love to help you guys out. I want every time that you guys have an encounter with me that you are learning, that you guys are getting the bang for your bucks while you're paying for school. And even outside of graduation, you guys can always speak for us, any of us for help once you become Boss Lady Beauty Academy students, you will always, always, always be a part of us. So again, have a beautiful day. 
I am so happy that I was able to perform this for you. Look how good she is a baddie. She is a non-symmetrical baddie, but she's ready to seize the week. All right, girls. Bye-bye.